In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, Grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and rejoice in your consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the seat of wisdom pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, today we want to reflect on the gift of piety after having reflected yesterday on the gift of the fear of the Lord. Yesterday, towards the end of our reflection, we commented on the teaching of Saint Gregory the Great on the journey of the soul, endowed with the gift of the fear of the Lord, as it moves towards the final gift, namely the gift of wisdom. Saint Gregory taught, through fear of the Lord, we rise to piety. What is piety? The basic definition for piety is this, to give filial worship to God precisely as our Father and to relate with all people as children of the same Father. That is, a person shows reverence for God as a loving Father and respects others as children of God, as his brothers and sisters, because that is what we all are. This respect and love is then extended to things consecrated to God, such as the church, sacred objects, images, as well as those who are vested with his authority, uh, the Blessed Mother, the saints, the church, the bishops, the priests, Consecrated souls, such as the nuns, our parents, our superiors, our country and its rulers. St. Paul says all authority, legitimate authorities, derive from God. So, the gift of piety is a filial worship to God as well as respect uh, and love for those realities that are connected with God, including our brothers and sisters. Now, this gift fosters the following spiritual dispositions in the heart of one who possesses it. First, filial respect for God as a loving father. Secondly, a generous and childlike love so that a person wants to please God even if it means making sacrifices. Thirdly, a loving obedience towards the teachings and commandments, respecting them as expressions of God's love for us. As such, a person approaches prayer or worship us at Mass not as a task or a burden, but as an act of joyful love. So people who have the gift of piety, they find it very easy, very tasteful to participate in the liturgy, to, to pray. They like it. There is a sweet uh, taste in their mouth as they participate uh, in things of God. While those who somehow like it, there is a bit of bitterness, reluctance, boredom, etc. The same with the commandments and teachings of the church. When someone has the gift of piety, they find it easy to carry out the commandments and teachings because they like it, they love it. And they are not moved by peer pressure or public opinion because they, they know the commandments of God and the teachings of the church express God's truth. And they love God and therefore they are eager, happy, to do it and they carry it out and they do it very, very willingly. Here we can see why fear of the Lord and piety are so closely linked. Piety, as I said, it also makes us love and have affection for God's friends. Who are God's friends? Who are the ones who are very close to God? First and foremost, our Blessed Mother. 
then the saints, the angels, then those representatives of God in this world, those who exercise his authority, the Holy Father, the bishops, the priests, the parents, uh, or God's treasures in this, our church, like the Bible, the sacraments, the church, the blessed religious articles. Uh, so concerning piety towards God's treasures, you might have seen people expressing it, or you have been taught to do so. For instance, you take the Bible, you first kiss it, you take the crucifix, you get kisses, you get an uh, image or statue of Mary, you kiss it, or you bow your head at the name of Jesus every time you recite, you say the name, you utter the name Jesus, or to be quiet and respectful in God's house. To touch the statue of the Virgin Mary with your hand and bring that fingers to your forehead or to your lips as a form of veneration. To avoid walking on graves which are blessed. Avoid throwing away to dustbin sacred pictures and uh, images which are damaged. There are so many ways of showing, expressing this gift of piety. And all that I mentioned are acts of piety. Let me give you some suggestions for us to grow in this beautiful gift of piety. The Holy Spirit gives it, but then we have to exercise it so that it may grow, it may affect. So now on, try to say the Our Father, which we say often, with reverence, with devotion, taking time slowly to meditate on the different petitions. Every word that you utter, utter with love. The same with Holy Mary. When you recite every word of that, especially when you utter the names of Mary and Jesus, utter it with love. Meditate on those words. And every other prayer that you say, say it with love, with attention. That is one of the things you could do. Second, regarding your duties, your work. Try to make your work holy. What does it mean to sanctify your work or make it holy? Uh, by knowing that this is God's will and you are, do it happily, joyfully. Remember St. Paul saying, God loves a cheerful giver. So work is giving your energy, time, talents. And once you do it, offer it to God with love with devotion, offer it for your intentions, for the souls in purgatory, for reparation for our sins. So, remind yourself with the, that ancient saying, offer it up, offer it up. So, offer up the task, situations, also those situations and tasks that you don't like much, that irritate you, that is displeasing to you, and offer it now for some good intentions. You don't like a particular work, a particular task. Do it happily uh, in your heart saying, Lord, I don't like it, but I offer it up for my children. I offer it up for my spouse. I offer it up for my parents who are no more in this world. I offer it up that this pandemic may be removed from our world. I offer it up. Or offer it up. And that is an act of piety. Offer it up. Let that be the catch word. Piety truly can make us endure the most distasteful of tasks. Where there is love, there is no labor. When there is love, things are done easily. Another suggestion, take care of your sacred space in your room or table or home by having sacred images on your table in your room or, uh, or uh, in your office. Keep that place tidy. Put flowers or candles whenever possible. Light the candles when you pray there. Show some acts of love, veneration towards our God, Blessed Mother and the saints. Touch or kiss those sacred images, objects such as the crucifix, the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and show your affection, love for the, uh, the person who is represented through that images. As you know, we don't worship images, but we worship Christ, if it is Christ, who is represented, uh, who is the one behind that crucifix, we venerate with a greater veneration the images of our mother 
because behind that mother, as we image, the one who is represented is our Blessed Mother. I am sure you can find many creative ways to show your love to the Heavenly Father and the members of the communion of saints. Do it, do it gladly with simplicity, with joy, and let the gift of piety grow within you. What is important is that through these acts, you grow, we grow in filial love for our triune God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, for the Blessed Mother, for the saints of God, for the Holy Church, and for one another. Now we recite the Novena prayers as usual. We say, O Lord Jesus Christ, who before ascending into heaven did promise to send the Holy Ghost to finish thy work in the souls of thy apostles and disciples, Deign to grant the same Holy Spirit to me, that he may perfect in my soul the work of thy grace and thy love. Grant me the spirit of wisdom, that I may despise the perishable things of this world, and aspire only after the things that are eternal. The spirit of understanding, to enlighten my mind with the light of thy divine truth the spirit of counsel, that I may ever choose the surest way of pleasing God and gaining heaven, the spirit of fortitude, that I may bear my cross with thee, and that I may overcome with courage all the obstacles that oppose my salvation, the spirit of knowledge, that I may know God and know myself, and grow perfect in the signs of the saints, the spirit of piety, that I may find the service of God sweet and amiable, the spirit of fear, that I may be filled with a loving reverence towards God, and may dread in any way to displease Him. Mark me, dear Lord, with the sign of Thy true disciples, and animate me in all things with Thy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>